as Pam goes to ring the bells, we'll jump ahead with our worship. Um, I am so glad that most of you are staying home. Well, pretty much all of you are staying home where it's safe. Pastor Trish is here, and she will be monitoring the Facebook messages. Um, if you have any prayer concerns, please feel free to start posting those so that they may be um, included in our prayer time. Now may we hear as Pam rings the bells. As we enter fully into ordinary time this week, the calendar reminds us that there is nothing ordinary about becoming the people of God. On this Sunday before we celebrate Martin Luther King Jr. Day, I wonder how we are being formed to listen to God's call to create beloved community. Part of that community is knowing who we are. Please let us know that you are joining us here by signing in on the Facebook page so we know that you are present with us and so that Pastor Trish can engage with you and you can engage with one another. Leading in the worship service at the moment, we have me. Um, we are waiting for Joe to show up. He's planning on being here, but um, he's not slid in yet. We have Bev, who's back from floating on her boat. Yay! We have Pam on drums, and we have George and Chris up in the booth. It feels a little reminiscent of a few years ago, but at least we know that we can gather next week, and all is well. As we journey through the next several weeks during this liturgical season between Epiphany and Lent, may we be reminded that we are and are becoming the people of God through our union with the incarnate Christ, who, in the words of C.S. Lewis, is the Son of God who became a human so that we may be children of God and whose identity is made known in his baptism, and in whose light we walk. Now, if you're joining us from home, Mr. Joe just arrived, and Miss Joanne, yay. So if you are joining us from home, you know this song, and it doesn't matter if someone is listening in, sing with all the delight that you have, Jesus is the light of the world. Please join in the call to worship. You should be able to see it, if the camera's working, on your screens. The voice of God calls to us. Are you listening? Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. The hands of God beckon us. Are you paying attention? Show us, Lord. Your servants are paying attention. The love of God asks us. Are you ready to follow? Guide us, Lord, and we, your servants, will follow. Come, let us worship the God whose tenacious love never stops calling and beckoning and asking us to follow. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our opening hymn is the summons. If you happen to have a faith we sing at home, it's on page 2130. Otherwise, you'll be able to find the words on your screens.
if anyone wants to come for the messy moment, please come for the messy moment. Alleluia. Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world. Yeah, okay. Here comes we have sound. We have sound. Woo okay. Come on down. This is fun. Look at this. Everybody's here. Everybody's here. Okay. So this morning is going to be one of my favorite stories in the Bible. Have you ever heard God talk to you? Like literally? Yes. Like you've heard God's voice? In this morning's story, there's a boy named Samuel, and he's trying to sleep. Imagine just being in bed, trying to sleep, and somebody says, Samuel, and he thinks it's his master's voice calling for him. And he gets up and he's like, what? What, what do you want? What do you need me for? Well, that's, that wasn't who was calling him. Go back to sleep. How many times did that happen, Pastor Nancy? Three times. And the third time, Samuel heard the voice, Samuel. And finally, Samuel thought, well, maybe it's God talking to me. And so he sat up and he said, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. What would you do if you heard a voice calling your name in the middle of the night? Get psychiatric care. <laughs> Get psychiatric care. <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> could be. What would you do, Reef? I don't know. Say, say that again. I don't know. I don't know. I think that was the right answer. I know what I did. What would you do, Pastor Nancy? I forgot. You forgot? I, <laughs> Just... I said no. It wasn't in the middle of the night, but I ignored it. I said no, and I forgot. I had an argument with God once. I was driving home. Who remembers when I had that big old, big old truck I drove? Mm -hmm. It's a great big truck. And I was driving home from, from Indianapolis. I had just left a meeting. And I didn't hear God say, trash. It doesn't always work like that. I just knew God was talking to you. And I, to me. And I remember when I was little and I was in church, I was in a, I was in a Sunday school class one time. And my Sunday school teacher said, God speaks to us in a still, small voice. And sometimes that's just knowing that we hear God in our hearts. So how do you think we're supposed to respond when we know that God is talking to us? How did Samuel respond? What do you think, Reef? Um, asking him what he want to say. God, what do you want to say? I'm listening. That's mm -hmm. what God expects us to do. Just say, I'm listening. Now, I did not do that while I was driving home in my big truck that day. I said, you got the wrong girl. <laughs> I did. I was like, nope. I had a three-hour drive home, and I, I turned up my music louder, tried to drown out that voice I was hearing. I said, God, I am not meant to be a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> I could have told you as soon as you said that. He got Literally, you. my call story is I lost an argument with God. Yep. I finally said, God, all right, I'm listening. And that's what today's story is about. Just listening when God talks to us. So let's say a quick prayer. Dear God, Dear God, Dear God thank you for talking to all of us. Thank you for talking to all of us. Help us be ready to listen. Help us be ready to listen. And do. And do. Amen. Amen. And you know what, Pastor Trish? Sometimes it takes other people to say what God has said to us for us to listen, because that's what I needed.
Sometimes we need other people to say, hey, maybe you should listen to God. <laughs> yes, exactly. All right, you could go back to your seats. Our first scripture reading comes to us from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. Now young Samuel was in the service of Yahweh under Eli. In those days, the voice of Yahweh was rarely heard. Prophecy was uncommon. One night, Eli, whose eyes had grown so weak that he could no longer see, was sleeping in his bed. The lamp of God had not gone out, and Samuel was sleeping in the tent of meeting near the Ark of the Covenant. Then Yahweh called to Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am, and ran to Eli, saying, You called, here I am. Eli said, I didn't call you. Now go back to sleep. He went back to sleep. A second time Yahweh called Samuel, and he got up and went to Eli. Here I am, Samuel said. You called me. Eli repeated, I did not call you. Go back to sleep. At that time, Samuel had not yet encountered Yahweh, and the word of Yahweh had not yet been revealed to him. Yahweh called Samuel a third time. And Samuel got up went to Eli and said once more, Here I am. You called me. Then Eli realized that Yahweh was calling the boy. So he said to Samuel, Go back and go to sleep. And if you are called, say, Speak, Yahweh, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to sleep, and Yahweh called Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel replied, Yes, Yahweh, I am listening. I invite you to turn to Psalm 139 for our Psalter lesson. You can kind of skip this part, okay. Joe. <laughs> yeah. Not the psalm, just all the announcements. We will be going directly from verse 6 to verse 13 and ending at verse 18. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I lie down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you show it all together. You pursue me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain it. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for you are fearful and wonderful. Wonderful are your works. You know me very well, my frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately wrought in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. 
In your book were written the days that were formed for me, every day before they came into being. How profound to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! If I would count them, they are more than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Our gospel lesson comes to us from the gospel according to John, chapter 1, verses 43 through 51. The next day after Jesus had decided to leave for Galilee, he met Philip and said, Follow me. Philip came from Bethsaida, the same town as Andrew and Peter. Philip sought out Nathanael and said to him, We've found the one that Moses spoke of in the law, the one about whom the prophets wrote. Jesus of Nazareth, son of Mary and Joseph. From Nazareth, said Nathanael. Can anything good come from Nazareth? Come and see, replied Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he remarked, This one is a real Israelite. There is no guile in him. How do you know me? Nathanael asked him. Jesus answered, before Philip even went to call you, while you were sitting under the fig tree, I saw you. Rabbi, said Nathanael, you're God's own. You're the ruler of Israel. Jesus said, do you believe just because I told you I saw you under the fig tree? You'll see much greater things than that. Jesus went on to tell them, the truth of the matter is, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the chosen one. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Will you pray with me? Open our ears, O oh God, that we may listen. Open our hearts that we may love, open our eyes that we may see, open our minds that we may think. Open our arms that we may love. Amen. The call of Samuel is also one of my favorite scriptures. I think if truth be known, many of us who have been called into a variety of different kinds of ministry will claim that story. Because it is so real. How many times does it take for us to hear what God is asking us to do? How many times does it take for us to realize that our call might have changed and shifted through the years. Nathaniel and Philip knew Samuel's call story. They were steeped in the stories of faith. And they knew when Jesus began the conversation about call, they knew what the response should be. But I think in some ways the call of Nathaniel and Philip is much more familiar in experience 
perhaps, than the call of Samuel. Jesus had decided to leave for Galilee. He met Philip and said, follow me. That was a call. Philip, follow me. And then it was Philip who spoke out to Nathanael and said, we found the one that Moses spoke of. And after some conversation, Nathaniel joined the following. How many times do we need to hear from other people what we cannot hear by ourselves? Just before Pastor Trish had the argument with God, in the big truck driving back from Indianapolis. She and I had a conversation, and I said to her, have you ever thought about becoming a local pastor? She knew she was called to ministry, but some things had to be made clear. When I was finished with my college degree. I went home. What do you do with a degree in history and you don't have a teaching license and there aren't any jobs out there. It's 1980. And the one thing you thought you might be able to do, lo and behold, you couldn't do because it required an advanced degree. The minister in my home church kept saying to me, Nancy, you have a call. You have a call. You have a call. He probably said it more than four times. Finally, I said, okay, I'll go to seminary. Don't know that I have a call, but I'll go to seminary. And I did have a call. And before very long, in seminary, I began to accept that call. But it took Al saying to me, Nancy, you have a call. Then it was up to me to continue listening to God to figure out what that call was and is. Because our calls do not happen just once. They happen continually. Several years after I was in ministry and I had been ordained and I was working at senior high camp, which at that time was called Institute because I think we were all nuts when we came home from it, we were supposed to tell our call stories. I was in leadership. And the other leaders got up, and of course, they all had the, I was walking down the street, and I got struck by God kind of call. I remember when I was baptized. I remember when all of a sudden I knew who Jesus was. I, well, that wasn't my call. I went to church when I was six months old. Before that, I was baptized when I was six months old. I don't remember a drop-dead momentous moment. But as I started telling my story, I said to these young teenagers who weren't that much younger than I was at that time, you know, when I was 12 years old, God called me. I was sitting right over there at Strawbridge under a tree, and God said, Nancy, be a minister. And I said, no, women don't do that. That was the first time I remembered that event since the day it had happened. Sometimes it takes us a while to remember our initial call. That was probably 20 years after my confirmation retreat when I heard the voice of God saying, Nancy, do this. At that time, when I was 12, when I was 22 and Al was trying to push me into being, to listening to my call, and when I was 32, after I had finally answered it, I didn't realize 
but that calm meant. It wasn't just about being a pastor. It was about listening to God every day. It was about listening to God even in those times when I felt the most disconnected. It's about listening to God even now to see how God is reworking and reshaping and recarving the call that I have. Same thing happened to Pastor Trish. I suspect the same thing happens to Joe every time he thinks about what call he might have. Sorry for putting you on, no, I'm not sorry for putting you on the spot. Tomorrow, we celebrate Martin Luther King Jr. Day. His call came differently. I couldn't find his specific call story when I was looking for it. Whichever book I have it's in is somewhere on a shelf that I can't find. But Martin Luther King Jr. was called to justice first. He grew up as a pastor's kid. He went to church. But it was his father's work with social justice that intrigued him. As a high schooler, he did what many of us do. He just didn't have much room in his life for all that religiosity. But he did have room for justice. And he began working for the equality of all people. Then his call shifted. It didn't shift away from justice. But he added the call to ministry. Serving a church, he knew that faith and justice were totally connected. It was his ordination that gave him the power to speak truth to power. Most of us know his I Have a Dream speech. But if you've never looked at Letter from a Birmingham Jail, I challenge you to read that tomorrow. I challenge you to teach that one to your students. For in that one, he calls others who had been called to ministry but who were not comfortable with the justice side of faith. He called them to re-examine. He didn't put them down. He didn't get on a, if I'm right, you're wrong, if you're wrong, I'm right, bandwagon. He invited them to consider what a world where all people were defined by Psalm 139, where they were defined by being created in the image of God by God so that they could become and are the beloved community of God. I know I've shared this story before, I had a parishioner in a galaxy far, far away, so that none of you can identify which congregation it was, who told me once, in his mid-60s, that he'd read the Bible through once. He figured that was enough. I'm in my mid-60s. 
I'm not one of those pastors that has a barrel of sermons to go to so that on a cold winter's day when there are few people in the sanctuary, I can pull one out that I preached before. For the living word of God continues to grow and to change and to call us in different ways. How is God calling you today? Frederick Buechner once said that vocation is where our deepest joy meets the world's greatest need. My joy keeps changing, and the world keeps changing. I suspect it does for you as well. How is God calling you? And how are you listening? Think about it. As Bev and Pam remind us that one of our calls is to go tell it on the mountain. Stewardship is more than putting a gift in the offering plate or sending it in the mail. Stewardship is about how we live our lives in faith, from the ways we are involved in the world to how we support our church with our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. One way to do this is by being involved in and praying for the activities of our church. Here are this week's stewardship announcements. They will also be emailed out to you so that you will have the complete announcements at home. Please let the church office know if you can help with loading coats and warm items on the warming trees across the street. This is an important ministry to our neighbors, especially as cold winter weather has returned. By putting them on the trees, we are serving more than our soup kitchen guests. I'd like to add here that I 
we put some out, I guess that was Thursday, when we left the building and made it known in the community that the coats were out there. And almost to a person, the folks who responded said thank you. So this is not only a ministry to our guests, but it's also a ministry that shows our community that we are a church that cares. I think to date there is one scarf that's stuck on a branch and maybe one coat on the ground. We have other coats and some blankets that the soup kitchen will be giving out this week. Soup kitchen is serving today. They are not planning on serving tomorrow because it's supposed to be even colder. Sign up for North District's Leadership University taking place on Zoom on Saturday, January 27th and Saturday, February 10th. All church leadership is encouraged to participate. There is more information coming to you and we will share more as we get closer to those dates. For those of you who like to use offering envelopes, we have new ones for 2024. They are available on Sunday mornings and during the week. This week, Galveston Give Back is on Thursday from 4 to 8. What a great night to fellowship, enjoy great food, and raise funds for the church. We do have coupons here in the building, and um, Pastor Trish has also sent those out. So if you are on Facebook, or not Facebook, if you're getting email, you can pull that and clip them. Um, We'll try to find other ways to distribute them during the week. The Administrative Council will meet on January 29th in the gathering room. Time is TBD. Future meetings will be on the third Monday of each month. The office will be, what time, six? Six, six okay. o'clock p.m. Okay. That was decided after the announcements were, were printed. Um, the office will be closed tomorrow. If the schools are closed because of weather, check before you come in. Um, so we don't know about Tuesday yet. If you have prayer concerns, this will be the time when they will be brought to the front. And I know that um, some have been coming through the chat. Um, Trish has my phone in case Facebook went out so if she had to switch over. So we do know that there are prayers out there. You all know what they are. Um, as we sing, Lord, speak to me, Trish will come with the prayer requests. Four sixty-three. Lord, speak to me. I may speak in
Let us pray. Oh God, we know that there are prayers that we have requested, and we know that you have heard. We know prayers for healing, prayers for safety, prayers for those whose lives are being torn apart by weather. We pray for those in our community who are unhoused, and we give you thanks for the warming stations that are available to them. For those who are coming out today because we could not get the word out that the soup kitchen might struggle. And for those who came in yesterday to prepare a meal that might have to carry people over a couple of days. We thank you for those who donated coats and hats and scarves and they are gone because they were needed. We pray for our community, for our new government. We pray for those who serve you. For Pastor Trish and Chris's neighbor's daughter and family. For Pam, who is having a second eye surgery tomorrow. For my cousin, who is healing from a broken sternum for all of those who are recovering. Thank you for the many who decided to stay home and be safe. This and so much more we pray in the power of the one who calls us, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. How often do we ignore the voice of God speaking to our hearts? especially because we move in a world that needs God so desperately. The reading from 1 Samuel brings us the phrase, the word of the Lord was rare in those days, which resonates with the relevance of the evening news. The word of the Lord is rare. As we bring our gifts to be dedicated this morning, we ask if you give online to do so, if you want to stick it in the mail to do so, if you're here in the building, the collection plate is toward the back. We pray that God might open our eyes to see, our hearts to feel, and our ears to hear the call to respond with obedience so that we might do what needs to be done to begin healing our world. God, receive the gifts that we offer you. Use them. Use us to share your good news of love, of justice, of the promise that you made us and will never let us go. Amen. If you remain standing in body or spirit for our closing hymn, it can be found in your hymnals or lyrics on the monitors in honor of the holiday tomorrow. Lift every voice and sing, number 519.
before we go, I would like to offer one final prayer, and that's for Jesse, who is cradled in God's hand and will have a second, third, fourth heart surgery on Thursday. Please keep Jesse, Dan, and Candace, and their entire family in your prayers. Oh God, be with that precious little boy. Cradle him with the power of your love and give guidance to all who will care for him. Amen. And now, beloved disciples, go from this place ready to listen for God's voice and to follow the Spirit's lead as we answer the call to build God's beloved community of justice, a community of peace, and flourishing for all in our homes, our neighborhoods, and our world. Amen. Jesus is the light of the world.